Welcome everybody. Today, we're going to talk about the basics of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe on the Nintendo Switch. First, we have to talk about the different steering options for Mario Kart 8. First, there is your basic analog control. You push left, you go left, you push right, you go right. But then there's three more interesting options to add on top of that. First, there is smart steering. Smart steering is indicated by the little antenna on the back of your cart here. Now, what this does is this prevents you from driving off the course. Even if you don't steer whatsoever, if you just hold A, your cart will stay semi on the road. This does have some downsides in that you won't be able to get a boost, but we're going to talk about that when we get to the boost section. Second thing you can turn on is you can turn on Auto Accelerate, which does exactly what it sounds like. It makes your car go even when you don't want the car to go. The third option is Tilt Controls, where you tilt the controller left and right to turn left and right. I don't like tilt controls. Since we mentioned it when talking about smart steering, I also want to go ahead and take this time now to talk about a pretty integral mechanic in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, which is boosting. Now, there are two kinds of boosts. There are start boosts and drift boosts. Start boosts are what happen at the start of each race when it counts down from 3, 2, 1, and you can get a boost off the starting line. In order to do that, you need to press and hold accelerate right as the two begins to disappear. Press it too early, and this happens. Press it too late, and this happens. The other more important type of boost is drift boosting. Now, drift boosting is what happens when you tap the R button right before going into a turn. You'll start to do a power slide. Now, the power slide gets, you'll see sparks generating out the back of your wheel. You'll see blue to orange to purple sparks. Now, the way this changes is it depends on how long you are holding into the turn. The longer you hold it, the greater the boost you're going to earn. Blue being the smallest boost, purple being the largest boost. We will go over this more in depth in the intermediate video, but what you really need to know is that hopping into a turn is how the best players race. I can hear, I hear what you're saying. I've had friends say to me before, I hate drifting. Kyle, I just want to steer and I just want to go. Can I play Mario Kart without drifting? And to them I say, yeah, of course you can. You're not going to win, but you can certainly do that. I highly, highly, highly recommend practicing your drift and finding a cart that feels right as you drive it. The last thing I want to talk about are a few of the different gameplay mechanics that are a little different from past Mario Kart games, or have kind of hidden mechanics that Nintendo doesn't really tell you about. The first one that you're going to see all over are these coins that litter the track. Now, coins you can collect up to 10 of them, but what is the benefit of collecting these coins and why do I lose them when I get hit by an item? The first thing that coins do is that each one boosts your maximum overall speed. So the fastest your character can go is how fast they go when you have 10 coins. The other thing that coins do is at the end of each cup, those coins are totaled up and used to unlock the different kinds of carts and wheel options in Mario Kart 8. I've also heard rumors that each coin you collect, you get a very tiny speed boost even after you've collected the maximum of 10 coins. But if that's ever happened, I haven't seen it. Items work a little differently in Mario Kart 8 than they have in previous Mario Kart games. In most previous Mario Kart games, you can only hold one item at a time, or through some manipulation like holding items behind your cart or swapping places in Double Dash, you could carry more than one item. Mario Kart 8 streamlines this process and you can always pick up two items. The difference is you have to use the item in your first circle before you can use one in your second circle. The other thing that this Mario Kart does differently from previous ones is the item you were always given was determined based on your place. So if you were in first place, you'd get kind of mediocre to bad items. And if you were in last place, you got great items. This Mario Kart follows a similar rule. The difference is the distance from first place determines what item you get. So if you're in 12th but still close to first place, you might only get a mushroom or two. But if you're way, way, way in the back, you're more likely to get the really powerful items. Now, I would like to show you what those powerful items are. But when I put myself in last place to try to get one, the game gave me Star Star. Star Star, Bullet Bill. Star. So I can't really show you what either items are. But there are some really cool ones. There is a piranha plant which boosts your speed and eats players in front of you. There's the eight, which gives you one of eight different kinds of items rotating around your car. 
and it's through the mastery of those items and the drifting that can take you all the way from worst to first. That's going to do it for this first video. In the next video, we're going to talk about specific cart combinations that are really powerful, as well as some different tips for how to maximize your boosting. If you're a fan of Mario Kart, you might be interested to know that this summer Black Rocket will be offering a new course where students will be able to build and race in their own Mario Kart style course and game. If that's something that's interesting to you, check us out at blackrocket.com.